Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. LEGO is currently running a promotion where the gift with purchase set is the super nostalgic Blacktron Cruiser. I will share some childhood memories about the team, we will build both this one and the original set and compare them, I will also bring in a few more space buddies, and I will also share my view about the whole gift with purchase phenomenon. Let's get started. So if you were playing with LEGO bricks as a kid, sometimes between the late 70s and the 90s, I'm sure you heard about one of LEGO's first themes besides castle and town, which was space. I think I got my first sets towards the end of the classic space era in the early 80s, this poor little guy is one of the survivors, but I can't really recall the exact set he came from. I have more vivid memories about the next generation when LEGO introduced factions in the space team, we had Futuron and Blacktron. These folks here are from my own collection, I will show you the corresponding set in a minute, and here's a Blacktron minifigure. Interestingly, I can't recall owning any actual standalone Blacktron sets. I obviously wanted to have badly the Starbase or the Renegade for example, because they look awesome. The set I'm sure I owned is this Galactic Peacekeeper that already had this Space Police guy and he was transporting this Blacktron figure as a prisoner I guess. Blacktron had a second generation and then the faction popped up in the form of various easter eggs and references, mostly as reimaged minifigures. Here's a torso of the Violin Kid from Minifigure Series 21 with the Blacktron logo as a pattern. Then here's this menacing guy, the Galactic Bounty Hunter from Series 19 with the familiar logo on his chest and there were a couple of others as well. Now let's talk about this set today, the 40580 Blacktron Cruiser. This is a gift with purchase set, which means you cannot buy it simply on lego.com or in lego shops, you need to spend a certain amount of money there, which is 190 euros or dollars in this case, and then you get this as a freebie. Honestly, I have mixed feelings about this practice and I will share my opinion at the end of the video, now let's see what we get. The designers really pushed the nostalgia factor to the limit and recreated perfectly the original design. Unfortunately, I only have the manual of the set 6894, but one of the box versions, which is the European one, looked just like this. The other one from the US had the age rating, piece count and the Blacktron logo here at the top. On the back of the box you can see photos about the details and the functions, but we want to see this live, so let's open it. The set has 356 pieces, and as far as I know the promotion runs until the 15th of January, so you better hurry if you want to get one. There are 8 numbered bags inside, a sticker sheet and a poor manual that is in a pretty bad shape. I think LEGO should pay more attention to this, especially with a limited set like this one. The sticker sheet luckily survived though. The manual follows the new minimalistic design language, but with a twist, we get an outline top view of the set at the front, and the black and white version of the Blacktron logo at the back. Well, I guess it's not that difficult to decide which one looks better. Unfortunately, there's zero reference to the theme or the original set in the manual, we only get the usual contents. So, I guess it's time to start building, I will build the two sets side by side to show you some highlights during the process. We begin with the minifigures and they seem to be totally identical for the first side. The print is very well replicated on the new one, but the old one looks still great after 30 something years. Their back also looks very similar with the air tank on, but if we remove it we can see that the new figure also has a back print, which is pretty cool I think. This makes the differentiation much easier. Here is the base of the cockpit module and the size difference of the two builds is already visible and the amount of parts used as well. So the first disappointment with the new set, we only get stickers, so the control panel is not printed like on the old version. The control equipment looks definitely more modern with this hot piece and the yellow detailing is more refined thanks to the new pieces. We can clearly see the difference between the instructions, back those days we didn't see which parts to use in each step, they weren't highlighted, there were no extra explanations and we had way fewer steps. We get the updated version of the metal detector that is a bit tricky to put in place, it is not in the old Blacktron set by the way, it could be found in the Blacktron brace only. Here we are with the front wings and the laser cannon Z did, before the mounting of the canopy pieces. Everything is bigger or longer on the new version, I like how the wings are sort of inverted and stopped at a certain angle, compared to the more traditional setup of the Ancestor. A huge thanks again to the designer of the Lightyear XL15 spaceship set for this cool yellow canopy piece, fits nicely here. Interestingly, the old set had more functionality here with the dual hinge setup, the canopy can be opened separately, but there's also a small storage unit behind the pilot. The basic structure and part usage is surprisingly similar for the second modules, except for the pieces used to connect the different elements. 
As you see, both sets use four old-school black headlight pieces at the same era, although for very different purposes. On the old set they are just there for decoration, on the new one they have small claw pieces in them, they will have an important role soon. Apparently the most useful tools in space are still a hammer and a wrench, both sets have these with a slightly different mounting position. The cargo doors are very different though, the old set uses these printed castle wall pieces introduced just a year before the release of this set. The new one uses these big flag elements held in place by those claw pieces you could see earlier. This design requires an extra assembly for the top that holds another laser cannon and the camera. There's also a box with two black ingots of something valuable, I guess. Any ideas what this is supposed to be based on the Blacktron lore? This small robot was already built in the old set before we completed the cargo section. It uses that old controller element as a body. We only built the robot in the new set at the beginning of phase 3. As you see it uses a much newer minifigure blaster piece as a body. The arms and headpiece are the same. The rear sections again have some design similarities at the beginning, but the part usage is quite different. Going forward this section might be the least similar. The old one has a very simple structure with a thruster, a rear ring and those iconic trans red panels. The new one is way more complex already at this stage with more details, like those trans red accents on the sides below the yellow line. There's a major design difference with the wings. Instead of the transparent panels we have black ones with the trans red tiles on them. The last items are added separately, this assembly with the thruster is clipped on upside down and then comes a much bigger wing on top of it. And now time to connect all modules. So here are the two cruisers side by side and I think they look pretty cool. The difference in length is quite visible, the new one has a way longer canopy but all other sections are longer as well. The attachment method with the clips works pretty ok and the whole system is modular so you can create various different configurations. It is definitely cool and adds a lot to the playability, although probably not as cool as the suggested alternate builds in the instructions of the original. I really miss those days when LEGO was allowed to simply inspire kids without giving step-by-step -step instructions for everything. From a functionality standpoint we have a lot going on, or minifig can fit in the pilot seat with the air tank on, that's a nice attention to detail. Front wings have two different positions, cargo bay can be opened, although these flag doors are kind of fiddly. We should be able to fit the robot and the box here, but it's quite a challenge. Unfortunately there's no page in the manual showing how this guy's supposed to fit here, so it took me a while to figure out. It is somewhat unintuitive, since there's a screen here so you would think it's for the robot, but the only position where I could close the cover is this one with the robot facing towards the front. As I mentioned I'm not the biggest fan of these doors, they do work if you are careful and only open and close them, but any slight knock from the side will dislocate them immediately. The adjustable rear panels work well, but I totally understand why this is the number one source of complaints for this set. From certain angles it looks reddish, but from others it is completely black, so from this point of view it doesn't look like the original at all. This specific piece was only used in 3 sets and the last one was released 21 years ago, so I understand why it is not brought back for a gift with purchase set, but it is such an iconic detail, it's a shame the execution is far from being perfect. The old set is more simple and robust in every way, we have stronger pin connections between the sections, there's the cockpit with the two hinges and the small storage section, a stronger cargo bay door that is held in place by friction, the robot having a dedicated attachment point, everything feels more playable for kids. I know, this is an 18 plus set made for adults who want to relive their childhood memories and it is still very much playable and swooshable, but I do respect the elegant simplicity and sturdiness of the old build. Talking about play scenes, you can see a very familiar silhouette on the screen here, apparently this guy is after the galaxy explorer. If you remember one of the screens in that ship showed another familiar icon, so apparently that was an easter egg of this upcoming release. Originally this Blacktron set was released together with some Futuron ships, I have this one here from my childhood, you can play a lot of fun scenes with them together. And if we add some old school base plays to the equation, they look really great. So I have to say that I really like this set, it is a nice reinterpretation of the original with modern parts and building techniques, it is not perfect of course, and I really wish it wasn't a gift with purchase set for multiple reasons. First, the lack of budget is visible, we don't have prints like on the Galaxy Explorer, only stickers. There are no special parts brought back either, which can be really felt with the transfer panels. Second is the availability and the price point. This set is only available for 2 weeks and then it's gone officially. 
The secondary market will have plenty for sure, but you have to pay around 40 bucks for them at the moment and this will certainly go up with time. Just as a reference, you can get the Galaxy Explorer nowadays for around 80 bucks, and that one has way more pieces for that price. I know, as a gift, theoretically you can get this one for free from LEGO shops, but frankly I had to buy some sets I didn't want or need just to get this one. It's a hassle, I will need to sell those, obviously at a lower price, so at the end of the day I will still pay a certain price for this one. Why didn't I buy something I needed? Well, I'm not sure about other countries, but here in Hungary lego.com is one of the most expensive sources to buy lego, I can easily get almost everything 20-30% cheaper in local shops. I understand the concept of these gifts of course, lego wants to encourage us to spend money in their expensive shop in exchange for the gifts, but I really wish these great sets were more accessible in general. People who don't follow these promotions closely will have to pay extra if they want to get this set like in 2 weeks or so, others like me need to deal with the extra hassle to buy and then sell sets just to get the gift and so on. Wouldn't it be great if LEGO would bring back these gifts a few months after the promotion as a regular set to buy? Early adopters could get them as a gift with their purchase and others could simply wait and at the end of the day it would be still widely accessible. There's another side of the story though, without the gift with purchase system, sets like this one or the great Ray the Castaway set simply wouldn't exist, as they didn't fit in the regular lineup, they are developed specifically for this purpose. So yeah, I'm glad this set was released, I'm glad I could get it, but I still feel like this whole system could work better if someone actually wanted to improve it. Please share your thoughts in the comments folks. How do you like this new Blacktron set? Are you happy with the return of the minifig? Did you get it? Will you get it? Let's talk about it. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.